trip, the van sort of broke down, so we all got to go together by ourselves, sitting crammed back together in the same person in the seat. It was fun. <laughs> and the thing that I was going to talk about today was the Youth Fest. It was a three day weekend thing, and on Friday, first thing we heard a concert of Brian Duncan, which was pretty cool. And um, that was neat. And then the second day, we heard a speaker, I think it was George McClendon or something like that. And um, he talked about. <laughs> <laughs> he talked about stuff. I'm sorry. I <laughs> went to bed late last night. And that was pretty neat, too. And then the third day, we heard two other speakers. Um, and they talked about stuff, too. I'm really tired. <laughs> um, How God has called us to do our individual work. Maybe we got his sleep last night. Um, I'm not very good at this, so I'll stop right now. Youth Fest was pretty cool. I thought everybody would like to know that. And I encourage you to go and get more sleep and have a fun time. <laughs> yeah, we can give her a hand. <laughs> I was going to ask her if she wanted me to interpret for her, because that was something we did in Mexico. It was, there was an interpreter, and um, she was giving her testimony down there, and he was, we have a picture actually in the back, um, in the foyer, and he was he was making a point in her picture was there, and that was at the time when she was giving her testimony. Anyway, also there's a nickname that you might want to ask her about. Um, I, won't, I won't mention it, because I won't embarrass her too much right now, but um, it has something to do with breakfast. Anyway, Mike, why don't you come on forward and we'll hear from you. Well, I'm going to talk about Mexico because that was just like the highlight of the whole trip. You know, we had given the gifts to those kids. It was just outrageous watching their face. <laughs> Tad bit loud. But you see those faces and how they respect what you give them is just unbelievable. They really changed the way I looked at it. We give them gifts, and when we give gifts to our parents, we just kind of look at them for a couple days, and then we throw them away. We don't use them. And those kids really enjoyed what we gave them. And when we did our puppet shows, and they sang along with us when we were doing it, it was just the best feeling. They uh, showed me that they have a lot of respect for their parents. And some of the kids these days don't give their parents any respect when they deserve it, and it really, it hurts to see it. You know, they have nothing, and we are just so rich with everything we have compared to them. And I just, I feel for them. You know, we need to keep them in our prayers because they, they have everything that, that they need to get through. You know, they don't have everything we have, but they've got what they need. You know, they, uh, they really, they shocked a lot of us when we got down there. We were expecting a, a fun trip just for fun. And it was, I think, the biggest growing experience any of us ever had. We all got closer and we really became better friends through the way we saw them, the Mexico, the kids, or the way they acted with each other. They gave each other their their trust. They trusted each other with just about everything. And the respect is just unbelievable. So that's about it. Thanks, Mike.
actually I'll try and try and fill in some of the rest of the area that we have on the trip. Um, Mike and Christina covered a couple of things that were really important for Mexico and, and Youth Fest, and they were a valuable time for the kids that, that were able to go. And also we had uh, Josh and Holly that also and they were unable to be here this morning. Well, I would like to talk about experience that Mike hit upon when he was talking. And we're going to find this in Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. Philippians 4, 10 through 13. It's a lesson that uh, anybody that goes to Mexico and works in an orphanage would definitely learn. Book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. I'm reading out of the New International Version this morning. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am needy, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything for him who gives me strength. Let's pray this morning. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would just guide this word, that it would come alive to us today, that we would be able to see by your Holy Spirit what you're trying to teach us through the trip to Mexico and through this word in, in, in your word. We just thank you for it. We thank you for what you are trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. I pray that you would just guide us through the rest of the service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> I want to talk about a song. In fact, I've titled this by the same title of an Evie song on the Evie Children's <coughs> tape. It's called Just Be Thankful for the Good Things That You've Got. And we're going to talk about just being thankful for the good things that we've got. While on our trip, we had a couple of days that were uh, more or less fun days. We uh, once went to Disneyland. And Disneyland has got to be one of the most enjoyable places to visit on this planet. I mean, Disneyland is so enjoyable. And we went to Disneyland and we got to spend a whole day in, in the Magic Kingdom in Disneyland. And we were enjoying ourselves tremendously until about 8 o'clock. And some of us got tired. And we went on rides and we go, oh, this ride is... <laughs> Whoa! It's on the ride was all right. This ride is so lame. Or we, we come off and we go, uh, oh, I'm just getting bored. I've gone on everything. I'm just bored right now. This isn't the place that's supposed to be the most enjoyable, one of the most enjoyable places. We were getting bored. And it wasn't just um, one or two of us. It was pretty much all of us. We just started to complain and whine because we were tired. We wanted to go. We didn't want to spend any more time. I mean, they have all this great food at Disneyland. They have all these great rides to go on. But we were getting bored. <laughs> We were getting tired. We were ready to go home. I contrast that with when we went down to Mexico. We were able to see these orphans. The first thing we noticed were they were playing soccer out in dirt. It's just dust. That's where they that's their their green grass is dust. It's, there's no grass. It's just a dusty, dirty, <coughs> not even flat field that they play. And they were playing soccer out there with an old, beat up, ragged soccer ball that was ripping apart in many different places. And they were just out there playing for hours, enjoying themselves, playing soccer. Not complaining about having an old, beat up soccer ball. Not complaining about having to play on dirt. Not complaining because they had to be barefoot, some of them. They were just out having fun, enjoying the good things that God had blessed them with. They were so happy to be out there playing in the sun. What is our problem in America? 
Why, why, <laughs> we're spoiled rotten. Why, why are we so concerned with, we had everything when we go to Disneyland. Disneyland is a great place and there's so many ma my, uh, magnificent things that we could do at Disneyland. And we're bored. Where these Mexicans were enjoying just kicking around a beat up soccer ball. What is wrong with this country today? I propose to you today that we in America need to begin to be content with whatever circumstances we are in. We need to accept these circumstances because they are from God. And God puts us in circumstances that he wants us so we can grow in them. We've been blessed with so much. And this book, uh, the book of Philippians, was written by a man named Paul. During the time when Paul was not in the most wonderful of circumstances, he was in prison. He was in prison for preaching the gospel of Christ. And he says, I have learned in whatever circumstances I am in to be content. This is a man in prison talking about being content. I can't think of the fun that there would be in being in prison. But Paul found it to be content. Earlier in the chapter, <coughs> Philippians 4.4, 4, some of you probably would recognize that from the bottom of my newsletter. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That is Paul writing something in prison, talking about how we need to rejoice in what we have, not in what we don't have, and not complain about what we don't have. Complaining is what I want to talk about first. There are several, there are three reasons that I, that I realized why we complain. One, boredom. That's something that really arose on the trip. I'm bored. I don't know how many times, many parents have probably heard this, that kids come, I'm bored. And it's something that, that, that we say a lot of the time. The thing of it is, we have so many things that we could do and that we should be doing as Christians. I look at the fact that there are so many people out on the streets that don't know Jesus. Yesterday I was in Tacoma for a camp meeting. And I was with the district youth pastor at the time. And we were walking out of his church. And there was a prostitute that works that corner. Came up to him and wanted to ask for money or something for food. And we were able to witness to her. To let her know about Jesus. You see, there are a lot of people out there that are like that, that need to know about Jesus. And we're too bored, too busy being bored, complaining about what we don't have to do, instead of going out and doing what we do have to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Boredom. Ephesians 5.16 says, we need to redeem the time because the days are evil. <clears throat> it tells me there that there are a lot of things that we have to do. We need to use our time wisely. And complaining about boredom is not using our time very wisely. With all the things that we can do, I could not imagine how boredom could set in. We need to redeem the time for the days are evil. I believe boredom is of the enemy. I believe boredom is a bias used by the enemy in order to get our focus off God. To get our focus off what God wants us to do. Boredom is something that's just to give us another thing to complain about. Another thing to whine about. But you know, God wants to do so many things through our lives. If we're just willing to yield to Him. If we're just willing to let His work and His goals become our goals. If we're willing to let His desires become our desires. And then to go out and do His work. I couldn't imagine how I'd be bored if I'm doing God's work. There's so much that He has for me to do. In fact, it comes to the point where I'm going, God, there's so much work. When do I find time to do all this work that you have for me to do? And that's the way it is. There's so many things we can do. We spend time playing in boredom. Look at the Israelites. They were out in the wilderness. God had blessed them tremendously with manna from heaven, with wonderful fresh bread daily. But they got bored. They thought... This stuff doesn't taste very good. I'm tired of it. I don't want this stuff. I'm bored with it. I want something new. I want something new and exciting. But you see, that boredom caused them to grumble against God, to complain against God, when God blessed them with something that they did not even have originally. 
Boredom is our is Satan's way of driving us against God. To say you are you don't, you don't need this stuff. You're tired of this stuff. God's blessed you so greatly with this stuff, but you need to be tired of it now. You need to be bored with it now. And Satan uses these kinds of tricks to drive us to the point where we are saying, yeah, God didn't give us much, did he? When we really look, get down deep inside and look at what God has blessed us with, he's given us a lot. Amen. And we Amen. need to not be bored with what he's given, but to be joyous about the things that he's blessed us with. The second area of complaining is in lack of material possessions. Lack of material possessions. We look at things, we see people that have these things, and we want them. And so we complain about the small things that we have when somebody else has a nicer thing than we do. And we go out and say, well, God, I want that. I'm going to complain. I'm going to grumble until I get that thing that I want. You know, all these, these fads that come out. And I'm not saying fads are wrong. I'm not saying that, you know, when the radio came out and everybody bought a radio and then the TV and everybody bought a TV. That's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when we complain because we don't have the latest fad, then we're complaining against God. Because God is the one that blesses us with the things that we have. Amen? Amen. And so we need to look at things, material possessions, as things that have been blessed, we've been blessed with, not as things we have to have. And if we don't have, we're going to complain about it. And I, I, I say this not because of a, a condemning thing. I say this from a very personal life, because there are so many things that Becky and I want. We're human. We like a lot of things. And sometimes we grumble, God, why can't I have that now? I want that now. But the thing of it is, that's not the time that God wants to bless us with it. And it may not even be the thing that God wants to bless us with. We've got to wait for God's time. And being content in the condition and in the situation in which you're in. That's right. We are one of the richest countries in the world, yet we are not satisfied. Want more. When we were down in Mexico, and I have, like I said, there are pictures from the back wall of the foyer. I took a picture of a middle class Mexican home. We have a picture of a middle class Mexican home. And it's below the standards of a lower class home. It's the upper class that compare to the lower class in America, the upper class homes that we saw. Tell you, we in America have been spoiled, mm -hmm. and we have we've been gifted with so many great things that we've gotten to the point where we're not happy with what we've got and we want more. But we'll never get more until we learn to be content with what we do have. We were so amazed. Mike was talking about when we went down and we. Uh, and the toys out to the kids. You saw the smiles on their faces. You saw the joy they got. They got, we, we took McDonald's toys down, little Happy Meal toys, and handed them to the kids. Things that uh, American kids play with for what, two days? And then, see ya! These kids took pride in these little toys, these little cheap toys. They enjoyed it. They played with them. They were you know, running around with them. They wanted us to show them how to play with them, how to put them together and everything. They were so excited about the toys that they have. Something that we don't even look at in the same way. The third area of complaining is in the area where we do not get our own way. We complain because I want to do my way, I want to do what I want to do, and I don't want anybody to tell me nothing different. And when somebody does, we start throwing our timber tantrum and go, ah, 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 ah. I don't get my way. But you know, God desires to bless us. But we have to yield to him. We have to yield to those in authority. And many times we complain about not getting our own way. We complain about the government. You know, the government's doing this, the government's doing that. And we spend our time complaining about it. Let me ask you, what's complaining going to get us? We complain about our schools, how bad the schools are now. We complain about the laws. You know, these, this country has such stupid laws. We just keep passing these dumb laws. It's so dumb. 
We complain about our church. Well, worship didn't go correctly the way I wanted it to, and I just don't like it. Um, that sermon really was offensive. I wish he wouldn't have spoke that. You know, they, we complain about things in the church. We complain about our leaders. We complain about the way our leaders are just the worst leaders that they could ever be. You know, we complain about our, our <coughs> Mr. President and how bad a president he is. <coughs> and I'm not saying he is our greatest by any means. I want to make that clear. But we complain about him to the point where we don't really let God have control. We need to be content in the situation. That doesn't mean we need to look at the situation as being good, but we need to be able to live in contentment with what God has blessed us with on this earth. And we need to also look to the point where if this is something that is wrong with this country, the only thing that we can do is to work to change it. And changing it is something that does not happen if we complain about it. Change takes work. Complaining takes a big mouth that likes to talk a lot. I can do that. I can do that. But God's called us to more than just complain. He hasn't called us to complain. He's called us to do something about the work and to do the work. You see, complaining doesn't change a thing. And what happened? I have a story from the trip. I won't mention names. Because there was this argument that took place on the trip. And these two parties, let's say, were arguing about a certain thing. And they came to me and told me about what they were complaining about and arguing with one another about and fighting about. And I turned to one and I said, okay, what could you have done differently to keep from fighting? And this person told me what they could have done. I went to the other person and said, what could you have done to not get this, 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 this thing? And this person said, the other person could have done something different. I said, wait a second. What can we change? We can change ourselves. We can't change what the other person does. We can't change what other people do. But we can only change what is here. And I'm saying, we have got to worry about what we can do instead of complaining about what we can't do. Amen. And that is what that, and that, that advice that God revealed to me, I think, is something that we need to reveal to the church. We need to let people know that, hey, we cannot change what we cannot change. And by complaining about it, it won't do a thing. But we can change what God has placed us here to change, and we need to do something to make that change. We need to make sure that we put, a, put aside complaining so that we can live life to the full intent of what God intended. I look in the church, when I walk in the church sometimes, I look through and I see some things, you know, there's a uh, a hole in that window over there, and I see some some things that look like they're they're broken in the church. Now, by me pointing out that window and saying that window has a hole in it, and complaining, oh, I wish that window didn't have a hole in it. That stupid window. Why does it have a hole in it? By complaining <laughs> about that window, does that fix the window? If somebody that's stepping behind sees that window, says that window needs fixed. I'm going to fix it. That's how things get done. When we look at the church and we walk in the church and we see things that are wrong, we're not going to fix it by complaining about it. We're going to fix it by doing something. We need to be people who are doers and not people who are whiners. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Who's the one that gives us strength? God. God gives us strength. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, the King James says. This is not saying, okay, here's a bridge. There's water about a mile down there. I can jump. Does that mean I can do all things? You know, I'm going to survive? No. That's not what I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. means. Because if it's talking about being content right before, it is saying that I can endure all circumstances in which I am placed in because of Christ who strengthens me. I can live through whatever circumstances I am placed in because God is there to protect me. God is there to heal me. God is there to use me to do His work and to see mighty things accomplished for His name. Yeah. We need to live a life of contentment. 
want to tell you, uh, Christine and Mike both alluded to this. We had an interesting, very interesting trip to Mexico. The first day we left on Monday, got in the van, <coughs> we started driving, you know, putting along. About uh, Centralia, I noticed the little uh, temperature gauge. It was right there at the top there, and I thought, oh no, this is what we had the problem. We had the other van. That's why we took this van. Oh no, what are we going to do here? I thought, I'll check the water. So I checked the water. The water looked great. The oil looked great at that point. Oh no. So we stopped. We let it cool for a half hour. We drove another 20, 30, 40 miles. We got down to just north of Vancouver, stopped for another half hour, got down to Portland, stopped for another half hour, got down to north of Salem, stopped for another half hour. And we did this all the way down to Eugene, and then I said, I cannot do this all the way to Mexico. <laughs> It'll take a week just to get to LA if we drive this way. So, we stopped in Eugene, we went and saw a mechanic that my parents see in Eugene, and he said, there's nothing I can do for it. <laughs> Not, not in uh, the time that you need it in. He said, I can't even check it out in the six hours that you have before you have to leave. I thought, oh, great. <laughs> We're in trouble. What are we going to do, God? You didn't bring us to Eugene to say, I'm going to send you to Mexico. What are we supposed to do here? So I got on the phone. I was told that I should call and try to find a rental van. So I started trying to find a rental van. I called the 10 or 11 rental companies in Eugene asking for a rental van, they were either all rented or were going to cost me over $1,000 for one for two weeks. I thought, I don't think that we have $1,000 to spend on a rental van. So I thought, well, there's got to be another option here. I called all the churches, the, the old Bible churches in the Eugene area, to see if I could borrow one of their church vans. And uh, one church was going on, was leaving town to use their vans because they were going down to youth fest. Another church had to, uh, or the pastor wasn't home, so I couldn't get a hold of him. And another church doesn't even have vans. So we were going, oh boy, no vans. What are we supposed to do? Finally, my sister had this brilliant idea. She called me and said, Steve, why don't you just take the car? Because uh, it's small. I want to fit our stuff in. I mean, we, how are we going to get all of our stuff to Mexico in a car? So I called. We got a Mercury Sable. And it was a little, it fit the Three of us in the front, three of us in the, the back, and all of our luggage in the, the back, except for a little bit. But thank goodness that God also provided a person who had a box to put on top, a clamshell. We put that on top, and we fit the rest of our luggage, completely packed into the whole car and the clamshell. So God provided so that we could drive from Eugene. Well, we left Eugene. On Tuesday afternoon, about 5 o'clock, got the weed, <coughs> left me, got to the grapevine. Everybody knows that the grapevine is a place where you're going uphill for quite a while. And we were going, just before we entered the grapevine, our car died. Our 94 Mercury Sable died. And we couldn't get it to move. We couldn't get it to go after that, at that point in time. What is this? Is this a message from God? Are we, we in the wrong place here? But God revealed to us that it was bad gasoline. We pushed it into a BTP station, filled it up with super unleaded. The car started up and it had no problem. The car had no problem the rest of the way. So we went down to LA and got to go to, to Youth Fest. It was a great time. I thought, oh, I'm glad the problems are all behind us. I'm so <laughs> thankful that the problems are all behind us. We went down after Youth Fest, drove down to San Diego to rent our van that we had reserved. Or that Monday. We got in there and found out that uh, the person who took my order was in, re reserving it for that Monday had reserved it for Sunday. And I had rented it the morning before we got there. Um, <laughs> what else can go wrong here? Um, he luckily, they had a van, but it had to be back a little bit earlier, so we had to just be back in San Diego earlier. But we were able to re rent a van there. They had one van left on the God provided. Are the problems finished yet, Mike? Oh, they're not. Oh no. My biggest blunder of the trip. <laughs> we got to the border and 
We had our van, we had our stuff loaded on the van. We were, just, we were ready to truck on into Mexico. And I handed, went to the, the missionary, I handed him all of our paperwork. <clears throat> oh no, I didn't check the paperwork very thoroughly because there were two signatures that I didn't have. And according to the open Bible policy in Puente de Amistad, you have to have all of the signatures. And I just started to get sick. I'm going, these other problems, I didn't have anything to do with. <laughs> this one, I'm responsible for. Uh, what am I supposed to do here? And, they, and, and the missionary said, I can't take anybody in that doesn't have any signature. I started to get sick. <laughs> I started to get sick at that point. I started to... I was about ready to just say, okay, I give up, God, I haven't done anything right on this whole trip, what is going on here, but you know, by God's provision, the missionary was able to call the parents of these two individuals and get verbal, and by chance, one of them was just leaving at the time, it was still <coughs> close enough to hear the phone. And so we were able to get verbal permission from the parents so that the kids could go into Mexico talk about the provision of God. If God calls us to do something, he's going to accomplish it. I was wondering, you know, I could have complained, we could have complained, and we did complain quite a bit about these, these problems that came up. But complaining didn't solve a thing except to make us upset. The thing that solved it is what God wanted to do. God provided, God delivered us to Mexico. That's what he said he was going to do, and that's what he did. And it wasn't accomplished through our accomplished through us being willing to do work. We could have turned around and gone home. But God calls to Mexico, and that's what we need. Regardless of what situation may come up, because this was a definite learning experience for me, learning all the problems that could go wrong on a trip. And there were a lot. But God was able to take care of us and to bring us to the point where we wanted us to go. You see, all the things worked out for his glory. All the thing, all things work together for the good. Have you been spending too much time complaining <coughs> and not enough time enjoying the gifts of God? Boredom, a few material possessions, and not getting our own way are three areas that cause us to complain and take our focus. What the, what the goal is that God has called us to go to. Philippians, Philippians has got to be one of my, my favorite books in the Bible. Uh, another verse says, in 3.13, it says, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, and reaching forth to that which is before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We need to forget all of the circumstances, we need to forget all the things behind us, we need to put them behind us and press on to that mark. Press on to what God has called us to do, and that is only then that we will be able to accomplish the Lord's will. <clears throat> when we live outside of these terms and complain, we're miserable. We are certainly blessed to live in America. I thank God for this country. I thank God that I was born in America. I thank God for the things that He blessed us with here in America. We need to have a grateful heart. We need to be grateful and thankful. Notice the songs that we sang today. We talk about being thankful. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Thy mercies, God has given us so much. We need to be grateful <clears throat> for what He's given us. It's about time. For us to live life in the fullest instead of complaining about life to the fullest. The challenge today is for us to get out and do our work instead of complaining about the work we have to do. Amen? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I believe that you have called us to do many mighty things. And that Satan is trying to take our focus off those mighty things that you want us to do. He's trying to get us to the point where we complain. But God, I want our focus to be on you. Lord, I pray that you would just give each one of us a vision of where you want us to go. What you want us to do. But Lord, we believe and we have faith that you will allow us to accomplish these things.
by the power of your Holy Spirit. Guide us today. We just thank you for Jesus. Amen. Amen.